What's up guys, we have an altered mental status assessment. Uh, Marshall's gonna be our lead EMT. Dan in the back is gonna be our team member. Kimberly in the back is gonna be our proctor. Um, Dan, Danny Herman, uh, is going to be our patient. And then Diane's gonna be his daughter. So just like every scenario begins, um, the proctor is going to give us a scenario. So Kimberly, kick us off. All right, you guys are dispatched to the residence for a patient complaining of stroke-like symptoms. All right, so we come onto the scene and we're taking BSI precautions. Is the scene safe? Yes. Okay. Is this our only patient? Correct. Okay, and uh, the nature of illness is uh, potentially a neurologic nature That's of illness. Yeah, and uh, we will be calling for ALS. They're currently unavailable. All right, uh, so now we'll just do uh, size up of our patient. So, uh, hello, sir. My name is. Marshall, this is my partner, Dan. We are with UIC EMS. Uh, can you tell us what your gender is? No. Uh, male. Okay. And how old are you? 74. 74. Okay. So uh, we have a 74-year-old male patient with a medical issue. Okay. Um, and we'll... Uh, yeah, so... Sir, uh, can you tell me your name? Is your name John? Okay. Uh, John, do you know where we are right now? Yeah, okay. I just saw mm -hmm. uh, Do you know what year it is? Is it 2021? Okay. And, okay, and who is our current president? Who is Biden dead? All right. So, even though our patient is unable to speak, he's able to comprehend our questions, uh, which is why he's ANO times four. Uh, and uh, sir, did you uh, fall down today or sustain any trauma to your head, your neck, your back? Okay, the reason we're asking that is to see if we need to take any uh, C-spine precautions. Uh, and since the patient did not complain of any of those, we do not need to take C-spine. Uh, yeah. Does our one patient look sick? Yes, our patient looks sick. He's uh, having difficulty talking, and our dispatch said that he's complaining of possible stroke-like symptoms, which we can see right now. So our patient is sick. Moving on to airway, do I hear any strider, any sounds? Uh, do I? No, you don't. Okay. And uh, our patient's airway is clear, uh, even though he because he's like able to make sounds and like still try to communicate with us. Um, and uh, yeah, so sir, what is, what's, what's going on today? What's wrong? Yeah, I noticed my dad, we woke up both of us like around 20 minutes ago, and I noticed that when we woke up, he was like swearing a lot as he saw his house. Okay. And he also was like pointing to his arm, and I think he was saying his arm was really weak. Okay. Um, so that's what I think my dad is. Okay. So that chief complaint uh, gives me a suspicion of a possible stroke going on right now. Uh, moving on to breathing, what's my tidal volume? It's adequate. Okay, the rate. Normal rate. Uh, pattern? Regular pattern. Okay, uh, how about an O2? The pulse box reads 96%. 96, okay. And we'll also be taking a set of lung sounds. Dan, can you demonstrate how we take sure. lung sounds? So we're going to um, start out on the top here, and we're going to compare the left and the right side. So we're going to go midclavicular, um, right be below the clavicles. So we're going to take this one first, and we're going to go here. Now we're going to move down below our nipple line, and we're going to take another one here, another one here. And then we're going to go mid-axillary. Um, so we're going to take one here and one here. And we're going to compare those, and, and what did we find? Your patient's lung sounds are clear bilaterally. Okay. okay. And when we took those, did we see any accessory muscles? No, you did not. Okay. Cool. Uh, so our patient is not in respiratory distress, so we do not need to provide any supplemental oxygen. Okay. Uh, and now we're going to move on to circulation. So do we see any major bleeding? There is no visible bleeding. Uh, what's our heart uh, or like our pulse rate and uh, strength? Um, the relative rate is within normal limits. Okay. And then how would you assess both of those actually? So to assess for both of those, and we'll also be assessing for uh, the, uh, like the regularity and the equality, 
To do all of those, we'll take the pulse uh, radial, and I'll just demonstrate on the patient actually. So I'll just look at the patient's hands, and I'll take a pulse like that while I'm checking for strength, rate, uh, regularity, and equality. They're strong, equal, and then normal rate and pattern. Okay, great. And uh, what's, uh, so we'll also be checking for the cap refill. Uh, to check for cap refill, we're gonna uh, grab one of the patient's fingers and squeeze the nail bed like so until it turns white. Then we're gonna let go and it should come back to normal within less than two seconds. Uh, and does it? Yep. Okay. Uh, and uh, what are my patient's skin conditions? Uh, their normal color, temperature, and moisture. Okay. So based on these findings, uh, we can conclude that the patient is not experiencing shock, so we do not need to provide any shock treatment. Uh, however, since this is a possible stroke, we uh, are going to go ahead and load and go. Okay. If this patient was in shock, what would shock treatment entitle? Uh, keeping the patient uh, warm, supine, and providing them with supplemental oxygen. Okay, uh, yeah, you think we're good to go? I think so. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and move on to our uh, secondary assessment. We're gonna be doing a neurological assessment here based on the fact that the patient is possibly experiencing a stroke. So, <clears throat> sir, do you have a headache? Uh, uh, I do, but I'm, I'm actually starting to feel a little better. Okay. That, that's good to hear. Uh, now, and do you feel like your arms or anything is... Yeah, I mean, it was... When I woke up, I couldn't really move it at all, but it's, it's okay. the feeling starting to come back through it. Okay, great, thank you. So now that the patient, uh, suddenly his symptoms are starting to improve, that's going to like change uh, our thinking to from a stroke to a TIA, which is a transient ischemic attack. Uh, however, this is still really important to transport because this can turn into a stroke later on. Uh, but moving on with our assessment, so you do have a headache. Uh, do you have any blurred vision? Are you feeling confused at all? No, not really. Okay. Um, I'll also be assessing to see if my patient is having an active seizure or had one, uh, seeing if they are have incontinence. So do they? Uh, no. What okay. else would you check? Like also, uh, looking into the mouth, seeing if there's any biting uh, on the tongue or like any blood in the mouth. Okay. Do I see anything? Okay. And do I see any drugs or alcohol paraphernalia around? No, you do not. Okay. Great. I'll also expose the patient's abdomen uh, to see if there's any um, trauma or like bruising to the abdomen. Okay. You don't see any. Okay. And I'll also be checking to see if there's a fever, so I'll Put my hand on the patient's skin to see if it's hot to the touch. Is okay. it? No, it is not. And I'll also be looking around to see if there's an open wound uh, leading to a possible infection as well. Nope. Okay. Do I notice any obvious head trauma? No, you do not. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I'll also be checking if the eyes are pearls. So Dan, can you use this pen light and sure. check? We're gonna take a look at our eyes here. All right, just keep looking straight for me. Great, okay. They do seem to be pearl. Okay, okay what does pearl stand for? Pupils are equal, equally round and react to light. Okay. Uh, we'll also be checking to see if there's any environmental emergencies to see if like the patient is experiencing any symptoms of hypothermia or hyperthermia. And are they? Okay, no, there's no indication to suggest okay. any environmental emergencies. Great. Uh, and yeah, so I'm gonna move on to Cincinnati. Okay. All right. So we'll be go ahead and conduct the uh, since or actually before that, uh, we'll also be checking the patient's uh, mouth uh, to smell for any alcohol or also fruity odor, uh, like for acetone in the mouth. Okay. You don't have any. Okay. Uh, and yeah, anything you wanna add on? I don't think so. We we checked for head trauma here. Okay. Yeah. And uh, sir, are you diabetic? Uh, yeah, I have I have diabetes. Okay. And what have your blood sugar levels been? Uh, we've been like seventy to eighty, eighty one. Okay. Pretty normal. 
Okay, uh, well, we're gonna, just to be on the safe side, we're gonna go ahead and take a blood sugar level for you. So Dan, can you take that? Sure. All right, so first we're gonna prep our site. Um, so is there any finger that you would prefer that I use? Uh, this finger. Okay, great. So I'm gonna kind of get the blood flow going in the site here. We're probably gonna poke on the side just to decrease the pain for the patient. So this is our alcohol pad. So we're gonna start wiping from the center going outwards as to not introduce more dirt. Okay, and while that dries, we can pop out a new test strip, make sure our test strips aren't expired. And then we can put that in our glucometer once the time they turn on, great. Okay, and now we are going to use our lancet here to poke the area after it's dry. We're gonna poke our area, and we should get a bead of blood. If we don't get enough, we can push some more blood into the area. And then we're going to come in and grab our blood. Okay. And then what glucose level do we get? Oh, I'm sorry. It was 170, or I'm sorry, 71. Okay. Great. Okay. Cool. So <clears throat> our glucose level is within normal limits. Uh, and yeah, so we're good to go to move on. Anything you want to add on? Um, if this was a behavioral emergency, what yeah. might we look for? So if this was a behavioral emergency, we'd also, again, look for to see if there's any drug or alcohol paraphernalia. Um, check the patient's breath for that. Uh, we'd also ask the patient if they have been experiencing mood swings lately, if they've been feeling depressed, uh, if they have any suicidal or homicidal ideations as well. Um, we're also going to palpate the head to see for any uh, like head trauma or anything? Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, and yeah, so we'll go ahead and move on to the Cincinnati stroke scale. So to do that, we'll go with the, it's the FAST acronym. So the F stands for facial group. So to check for that, we'll just go ahead and ask the patient, sir, can you smile for me and show me your teeth, please? You don't notice any facial group. Okay, great. Uh, now we're gonna check for A, which is arm drift. So sir, please lift your arms up like so with your palms up and close your eyes. Okay. And now- You don't notice any arm drift. Okay, yeah, so we're just checking for arm drift here. And now we're gonna move on to S, which is slurred speech. So sir, can you repeat after me? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Okay. Great. Oh, Dad, you're not anymore. Yeah, I don't, I don't even. I don't. Do I still have to go to the hospital, or I mean, yeah, I still need to do this. Yeah, you really should go to the hospital. This could develop into a stroke later on, so it's really vital that you go visit yeah. the hospital. For my thirty years as a nurse at UIH, I think we should go. We should listen to people and teach them. All right, fine. Okay. Thank you for your cooperation, sir. Uh, and the last thing we're gonna check for in the Cincinnati is T, which it stands for time, time to transport. So, but we're already on the ambulance and we'll be transporting. Uh, we'll also be doing- What our last known normal as well? Yeah. What was uh, it? Yeah, so we noticed this 20 minutes ago when he woke up, but yeah. okay. I guess if you asked me since last time he was normal, it was like around eight hours ago. Okay, eight hours, so. Yeah, I went to sleep. Okay. And um, we'll uh, also be doing the finger to nose test. So to do so, sir, um, so you're gonna touch your finger, start with your left hand, your, to your nose, and then you're gonna touch my finger. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and move here and do it here. Okay, now do the same thing, but with your right arm. Okay, great. So the patient passed the finger to nose test uh, and we'll also be checking for the grip strength. So to do so, we'll just have, sir, can you just squeeze both of my fingers? There you go. So their grip strength was equal on both sides. Uh, we're also going to check for PMS, so pulse motor sensation. Uh, we'll start with the upper extremities here. So we'll go ahead and check the pulse on both Extremities. Okay, they're equal. Okay. Um, motor, so sir, can you just squeeze my fingers again? And sensation now, so sir, can you just close your eyes for me? Which finger am I squeezing? My index finger. Okay, and how about here? My pinky finger. Okay, so PMS is present in all 
uh, in both upper extremities. Now moving on to the lower extremities. So we'll go ahead and check the pulse. So to do so on the foot, we can take it here. And if we can't get a good pulse here, we can always go behind the ankle and check for a pulse there. So, okay. Now to check for motor, sir, can you push up on my hand? And now can you push down like a gas pedal? Great. So the patient is able to do so. And then we're gonna check for sensation. So, sir, can you close your eyes? And which toe am I squeezing? My uh, big toe. Okay, so patient passed the PMS on all four extremities. Um, and yeah, so anything else you wanna add on? Probably just move into history. Okay, so let's move on. We're gonna move on to the patient's history. So, sir, did this happen did, like, did those symptoms happen suddenly or did they like gradually come on? It was pretty, I mean, when I woke up, I just felt this way. Okay. So. And anything makes them better or worse? No. Okay. And when you were feeling that weakness in your right side, did that go anywhere else or was it just localized to that area? Uh, just the kind of the whole right side, but not radio, just over here, yeah. Okay. And what did that feel like exactly? Like, I felt weak and maybe a little numb, uh, like tingling. Okay. And uh, on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 is like, you feel like really strong, you don't feel anything at all. Uh, to 10 is like, this is the weirdest, weakest, most numb you've ever felt. It was like an 8, like I couldn't move it. Uh, before you guys shut up, I, was, I just couldn't move it at all. Okay. And how long has this been going on? Since I woke up. Since you woke up? Yeah, I mean, I feel better now, so. Okay. Yeah, so 20 minutes? Okay. And you feeling anything else? Any additional symptoms? No, no, I feel, I feel, feel great now. All right. Uh, great. And uh, do you have any allergies? No. Do you take any medications? Um, yeah, I, I take a couple of medications for, yeah. for my blood pressure and, and diabetes. I take uh, Lubetalol, I think. Okay. And Metoprolol. Okay, great. Um, and what was the last thing that you ate? Just, just water. I don't have anything to eat today. Okay. Uh, and so you said you're diabetic, you have high blood pressure. Do you have any other medical history we should know about? No, that's a... Okay. And what were the events like leading up to you feeling all those symptoms? I just woke up and felt this way. Okay. Uh, so we got the history down. Now we'll just uh, move on to take a set of vital signs. So, uh, can I get a blood pressure? Okay, your patient's blood pressure is 180 over 90. Okay. Uh, can I get a heart rate? Heart rate was 96. Okay. Uh, respirations? 20. Okay. Uh, uh, o, O2? The SPO2 was 96%. Okay. Okay. Jan, is there anything else you want to add on? Um, no, I think we're doing pretty good here. Okay, cool. Uh, so we'll be, since uh, the patient uh, experienced uh, possibly a TIA, we're going to be reassessing every five minutes. Um, we'll repeat the primary assessment. We're going to check our interventions. Um, and yeah, so we'll check our interventions and anything else. Uh, uh, yeah, so we have our primary, we're going to reassess every five minutes, yeah. um, we're going to repeat any relevant uh, vital signs, so mm -hmm. maybe we might want to take another blood sugar. Yep. Um, blood sugar is still 71. Okay. Three. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we can go ahead and... Let's uh, maybe check in with our patient to see how they Yeah, sir, how, how, are you, how are you feeling again? I feel great now. I don't even really want to go to the hospital, but okay. I mean, that's what you guys say. I should. Yeah. That's so nice of you, Dad. Let's play ball later. <laughs> Where are you taking my dad? Uh, we're going to be taking him to a stroke center. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so our field impression is that the patient experienced a possible TIA. So, yeah, that's our field impression. And we're going to go ahead and give in our radio report. Uh, so, yeah, I'm ready. So, hello, UIC. Uh, we are... UIC MS1, we are coming in with a possible stroke. The patient is a 74-year-old male, male who is complaining of right-sided weakness and uh, was having some pretty intense slurred speech. 
when we arrived on scene, the patient was ANO times four. Uh, he wasn't able to answer our questions verbally, but he was able to nod to our questions. Um, the ABCs were good on the patient. Um, we did the we did a neurological assessment on the patient, and uh, while we were doing so, the patient's or right before so, the patient's symptoms significantly improved, and he was actually able to pass all the uh, Cincinnati, the finger to nose test, and the uh, grip strength. Uh, we took a history of the patient. He has a history of diabetes and high blood pressure, so we took a blood glucose level uh, that was 71, so that's within the normal limits. Uh, the patient uh, medications, he takes labetalol and metoprolol for diabetes and hypertension or high, high blood pressure. Um, and uh, since the patient's symptoms significantly improved, we are uh, considering this to be a TIA. Uh, the patient's vitals, most recent set of vitals were blood pressure 180 over 90, heart rate was 96, respirations are 20. O2 is 96% and uh, the blood glucose is 71. We are five minutes out. Do you guys have any questions? No, nope, we were fine. Okay, sounds good.